les raisons qui font que les hommes de science passent tant de temps dans leur laboratoire à leur recherche Quels sont les motifs derrière cette passion Why do scientists spend so much time in laboratories Apart from the desire for knowledge, it is probably because of their awareness that they are working to create a better world. Some of them say so directly. They want their work to serve humanity and not to be used against it. Nauka pro mnie twórczości ukształtowała oblicze współczesnej fizyki i chemii. The science of radiation has molded modern physics and chemistry. It has infiltrated into all fields of pure and applied science. It has even largely influenced the character and nature of the culture of the modern world. The discovery of radium is one of the finest achievements of the human mind. It must not be used for military purposes. It has been proven that radiation has a very strong effect on all kinds of living tissue. Like many Polish and French scientists, I too was and am a pacifist. I register myself as one of the first world citizens. I long for the sad time we live in today to give way to universal peace. The introduction of nuclear energy into medicine undoubtedly constitutes, along with surgery, one of the most effective means of treating cancer. The use of ionizing radiation in medicine certainly constitutes the most humane form of exploiting radiation ever discovered by mankind. For many years we have been collaborating with the Laboratoire de Physique Cosmique and with the École Normale Supérieure in Paris. We have established new contacts with the École Polytechnique and with centers of nuclear research in Paris, Grenoble, Strasbourg and Karadash. The most difficult problem to solve in connection with cosmic flight is that of fuel. The most frequently used are solar piles. Batteries are also used. But the most hopeful prospects are for the use of radioactive energy for this purpose. Radioactive substances generate energy for an unusually long period, much longer than the life of a satellite. The discovery of the production of energy by these substances was made by Maria Skłodowska Curie. I was born in Warsaw the 7th November of 1867 as the youngest of five children. My family is Polish. My family name is Skłodowska. My father, Władysław, followed the university course in St. Petersburg and later established himself in Warsaw as a teacher of physics and mathematics in one of the lyceums of that city. He married Bronisława Boguska, who was the director of one of the best schools for young girls. It was in this house that on the 7th November of 1867, Maria Skłodowska Curie was born. In 1898, she discovered the radioactive elements polonium and radium. We all started our studies very young. I was only six years old. My father was an excellent teacher, much interested in our studies, and he knew how to direct them. But the educational conditions were very difficult. Warsaw was then under czarist rule. One of the most threatening aspects was a pressure exerted on schools and children. On the other hand, such abnormal conditions for growing up raised the patriotic feelings of Polish youth to the highest level. Since my childhood, I have had a strong taste for poetry, and I willingly learned by heart long passages from our great poets. Mickiewicz, Krasinski, Słowacki were among my favorites.
I found mathematics and physics easy in school. I was only 15 when I finished my high school studies, always having us. The periods of vacations were particularly comforting when escaping the strict watch of the Tsarist police in a city, we took refuge with relatives or friends in the country. Kemper lies at the join of the Biebja and Narev rivers. Then it is easy to guess that we do not lack water either for bathing or boating, which gives me great pleasure. I'm learning to row and have even made good progress, and the swimming is fine. My first impressions of the mountains were powerful. Brought up in a plain, I was delighted with my stay in a village of the Tatra Mountains, the view of peaks, excursions into the valleys and to the lakes almost touching the sky, with names as picturesque as Morske Oko. My father needed rest. His fortune was very modest. So I resolved to accept the position as governess for several children in the country. Thus the information I can give you I heard from my father who worked in the Krasinets sugar plant when Maria Skłodowska lived in Stuki. My father told me that she was a very pretty, likable and pleasant person. She told the children of Mr. and Mrs. Zhuravsky and she also taught the farmhands' children that they might read and write Polish. I was as much interested in literature and sociology as in science. However, during these years of isolated work, trying little by little to find my preferences, I finally turned towards mathematics and physics. The preparation I had received at my high school was very lacking. I had heard that a few women had succeeded in following certain courses in Petrograd or in foreign countries, and I was determined to prepare myself to follow their example. It was in this physics laboratory that Maria Skłodowska Curie began her scientific work in 1890-1891. To my great joy, for the first time in my life, I had access to a workroom a small municipal laboratory which was directed by my cousin. I tried out various experiments described in treatises on physics and chemistry, and the results were sometimes unexpected. at the age of 24 that I was able to realize the dream that had been always present in my mind. I was entirely absorbed by my studies, which at first gave me difficulty. I had to make up for my legs, especially in mathematics. I divided my time between the laboratory, lectures and work in the library. In the evenings, I often worked late into the night. I was enchanted with everything new I saw and learned. It was like a revelation of the new world, the world of knowledge, which was at last open to me. was able to make up for the deficiency and to pass examinations with other students. I had the satisfaction of graduating in first rank as licencié sciences physiques. 
and a year later in second rank as licencié sciences mathématiques. It was in 1894 that I first met Pierre Curie. He seemed very young to me, although he was then aged 35. His simplicity and his smile, at once grave and young, his slow reflective words inspired confidence. We promised each other, didn't we, at least, a great and mutual friendship. Only don't change your mind, for these are the things one cannot force on oneself, and promises are of no use here. But how wonderful it would be, I can't even believe in it, if we could spend our lives together, concentrating on our ideals, your patriotic ideal, our ideal of all mankind and scientific work. Marriage Register for 1895, the So Town Hall. Our marriage took place in July 1895. We were very happy with our small apartment with a beautiful view of the garden. From then on began a new period in my life. Pierre Curie had just received his doctor's degree and a position in the School of Physics and Chemistry of the city of Paris. My husband used to spend almost every hour free from lectures on experiments in the school laboratory and I was given permission to work with him. I began to work on the magnetic properties of steel. I finished my work and published it in 1897. The most important thing was that we were alone together, which guaranteed peace, brought us close together, full of joy. Moja dziecina mała i droga i miła, że kocham bardzo mocno. Zostawiłem twój list tylko dzisiaj i jestem bardzo szczęśliwy. I wrote you only a few words, so that you would not be without news. The birth of our first daughter brought a great change in our life. At that time I had decided on a theme for my doctorate. My attention had been drawn to the interesting experiments of Henri Becquerel on salts of uranium. Becquerel had noticed that by placing some uranium salt on a photographic plate covered with black paper, the plate would be affected as if light had fallen on it. The effect is produced by special rays which are emitted by the uranium salt. These rays can discharge an electroscope. My husband and I were much excited by this new phenomenon and I resolved to undertake the special study of it. My determinations showed that any substance containing uranium is as much more active in emitting rays as it contains more of this element. After several months we finally succeeded in isolating a substance much more active than uranium. We announced the existence of that substance and I called it polonium in honor of my fatherland. In November, we could announce to the scientific world the discovery of a new element, which we called radium. We had now to isolate the elements in their pure state. We had to submit great quantities of ore to a careful chemical processing. It was in this miserable old shed that we passed the best and happiest years of our life. At last, the time came when the isolated substances showed all the characteristics of a pure chemical body. It was in 1898, in the laboratory of this school, that Pierre and Maria discovered radium. They were helped by Gustave Bermond. In 1903, I finished my doctor's thesis and got my diploma. I 
premier radio-élément par Pierre et Marie Curie présente un caractère tout à fait merveilleux. The discovery of the first radioactive elements by Pierre and Maria was most unusual if we consider the meager materials they had available. They both showed themselves completely unselfish in not patenting their discovery, but making of it a gift to humanity. L'un et l'autre, et Marie Curie ensuite, ont fait preuve d'autre part d'un désintéressement absolument total en faisant cadeau à l'humanité sans jamais en retirer aucun avantage matériel des découvertes qu'ils avaient réalisées. Our second daughter Eve was born in 1904. It was the same year that, owing to the award with the Nobel Prize, my husband got the chair in physics set up for him at the Sorbonne. When we observe the progress made in physics during the last 20 years, we are struck by the change in conception that has taken place in the fields of electricity and matter. I can't add anything new on the death of Pierre Curie. I was born 20 years after his death, but it was often talked about in my family, and I can give some details. The 19th of April, 1906, Pierre Curie left a meeting of Société Savante in Danton Street, not far from the Saint Michel Square. He went to the publishers, Cotier Villard, in the Cœur de Grand Augustin. The publishing house was closed because of a strike. So he went to the French Institute, where he was to give a paper by a friend. The copy of that paper was in his pocket at the time of the accident. room to which he would not return, the bunches of flowers he had brought from the country had not yet faded. The Faculty of Sciences of Paris decided to offer me the chair as professor, which my husband occupied only one year and a half at the Sorbonne. It was an exceptional decision, as up to then, no woman had held such a position. When one considers the progress that has been made in physics in the past 10 years, one is surprised at the advance that has taken place in our ideas concerning electricity and matter. I wish to recall that I made the discovery of radium and polonium together with Pierre Curie. It is also to him that we owe a number of basic works on radioactivity, which he carried out either alone or with me or with his students. At the end of 1911, for the second time, I received, this time alone, the award of the Nobel Prize. This was a very exceptional honor, a high recognition of the discovery of the new elements and of the preparation of pure radium. to serve my unhappy country based in blood after more than a hundred years of suffering, I have decided to devote all my strength to my adopted country. My attention has been drawn to the legs in the health service, which quickly showed me the most effective field of activity, the organization of a radiological service and radiotherapy for military hospitals.
can never forget the terrible impression of all that destruction of human life and health. To hate the very thought of war, it ought to be sufficient to see once what I have seen so many times. The University of Paris organized two laboratories in the Radium Institute, Pasteur's and Curie's. Madame Curie was much interested in our research. She took part and advised us in our investigations in a very subtle way, and she certainly attached much importance to the results of our efforts. I was Madame Curie's chauffeur from 1930 to 1934. In the morning I used to drive her to the Radium Institute. There she got out and went to her office. In the evening I took Madame Curie home. From the laboratory in Pierre Curie Street we drove through Ulm Street passing the Pantheon. We went by Cardinal Lemoine Street which didn't look as it looks today in Paris. Then we drove down Saint-Germain, over the Soli Bridge, and then to the Quai de Betuine, where I stopped in front of her house. My mother's financial situation, which was never good because of her indifference, is nevertheless quite good in recent years and permits her an easy and even comfortable life. But she by no means knows how to enjoy comfort. She is unable to order others to serve her. If the driver waits for her for more than a few minutes, my mother has an almost instinctive feeling of guilt towards him. L'Arquest on L'Arquest Point on Lonnet Bay, close to Pimpol, is a place in Brittany where scientists used to spend their holidays 50 years ago. Madame Curie was in the group around the Sorbonne professor of history, Senior Ball. Madame Curie participated in all sports. She swam and rode and took part in the life of L'Arquest with the young people. What is society's interest? Should it not favor the development of scientific vocations? Is it then rich enough to sacrifice those which are... Humanity surely needs practical men who make the best work for the sake of their interests without forgetting the general interest. But it also needs dreamers, for whom the unselfish following of a purpose is so... We should not allow it to be believed that all scientific progress can be reduced to mechanisms, machines, gearings. Neither do I believe that the spirit of adventure runs any risk of disappearing in our world. If I see anything vital around me, it is precisely that spirit of adventure. I am deeply moved by all these proofs of recognition that I see here in America. Maria Skłodowska Curie kept vital contact with Poland during her whole life. From 1912, she was the honorary director of the radiological laboratory of the Warsaw Scientific Society. 
naród polski postanowił uczyć... In 1923, the Polish people, on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the discovery of radium, decided to honor their fellow countrywoman with a gift, which was most close and precious to her. The Warsaw Radium Institute in Wawelska Street was founded from the funds collected by the whole nation. Not only was the institute named for Maria Skłodowska, but she was also its honorary director and maintained her interest in its activity until the very end of her life. She even indicated the direction of its work and appointed the heads of various departments. I went for a walk alone towards Vistula yesterday morning. The river winds lazily along its wide bed, bluish-green near at hand, but made bluer far off by the reflection of the sky. I feel an irresistible desire to go and loiter on one of these luminous and magnificent beaches. Maria Curie died at the age of 67 in San Selmos on the 4th of July 1934 from a plastic pernicious anemia of rapid feverish development. The bone marrow did not react, probably because it had been injured by a long accumulation of radiation.